All right, so in part one, this is where we left off. I had these five areas where I wanted to explore. So I want to start with not limited to Windows, right? So OPC UA um, is supposed to be platform independent, cross-platform. And what does that mean in terms of the reality, in terms of the practical reality? All right, before we get into it, um, just some semantics here. OPC from the 90s and so on, the first variation is a classic OPC. It's called classic OPC now, uh, but that stood for OLE for process control and OLE stood for object linking and embedding. So it's OLE for process control. Okay. So um, OPC UA, however, there's no OLE anywhere in there. It's open platform communications, unified architecture. All right. Sounds expensive. And um, they kept the OPC UA because it's good marketing, right? But just uh, so you know, that's the that's what the acronym means. All right, so let's get into it. So I just want to use an example scenario to look at the before and after. So let's look at classic OPC, an example scenario. Let's say I have a Modbus RS485 device and I'm in charge of integrating that into the plant network. Well, the first thing I would do is get a converter, a 485, uh, Modbus 485 to Modbus TCP converter, connect the 485 side to there, and then connect my converter to the plant network. I want to get rid of all this serial device stuff by converting it all to TCP. Good. And then I would have my Windows PC or network of PCs. It would have somewhere an OPC server on it. There would be an OPC client. This is classic OPC, by the way. I uh, usually SCADA software, the OPC client, and then I would connect them all like that. So the OPC server here would be acting as a sort of a protocol converter. And that was um, sort of the main point of having that OPC server. So the OPC server, let's say it's from Capway or Matricon to the big players over the years, they would have uh, support for multiple protocols, you know, like Ethernet IP, all the Allen Bradley stuff, all the Siemens stuff, or tons of tons of different native protocols. In this case, it would be converting from Modbus TCP to the OPC standard, and the OPC client would then be able to communicate with the OPC server, not caring exactly where the data was coming from. That's the magic of classic OPC. Good. And this worked very, very well. And in this scenario, the OPC server and the OPC client being classic OPC are stuck on Windows. They can't run anywhere else. Must be Windows. All right, let's look at OPC UA, similar scenario. I have my Modbus 485 device, my Modbus 485 to TCP converter connected to my TCP network here. I have my same Windows PC, but now I have an OPC UA server and an OPC UA client. Now, this is doing the exact same thing. The OPC UA server is still be uh, sorry, still acting like a protocol converter. It's communicating via Modbus TCP and getting all this data and converting it, converting it to the OPC UA standard. And the client is consuming that data. Okay, so this classic OPC architecture is still in use today. In fact, if you look at most OPC UA server and client implementations, this is what you're going to be seeing. OPC UA server being a really cool protocol converter. But with OPC UA, you could have other scenarios, like this one here. If I want, I could actually get now on the market, just type into the Google Modbus 485 to OPC UA converter. You're going to get tons of stuff. Um, because you could implement OPC UA s a server on an embedded device now, you know, like a, just a device that clicks onto a DIN rail and connects to the Ethernet network. Um, so you could have this, so there'll be an OPC UA server in here, so that now the client could communicate on the network to the OPC UA server. So the OPC UA server in this case is not on Windows, it's on, on some sort of embedded device. And, but there's still sort of protocol conversion going on here. Modbus 485 to OPC UA. Good. You could also have this scenario. A PLC or VFD or some other device with an OPC UA server built into it. Now there's no protocol conversion taking place here. What's happening is that when you have this type of device, what the PLC vendor will be doing is that they're writing um, software, OPC UA software, 
and expressing their native PLC memory in OPC UA format, right? The OPC UA data model. So now the OPC UA client could talk to this PLC via its OPC UA built-in server. Okay, so you can have these various scenarios here on the OPC UA server side. On the client side, you could have this. You could have a Linux Edge device being a client and communicating with these servers. Hey, you could even communicate with this server here on the Windows PC and have an internet connection. Or you could even have a cloud application uh, implementation. You have a client communicating with all of these. Of course, there's firewall, gateway, and all that jazz, right? I didn't put that in. But I want you to get an idea from this of the potential of OPC UA. This is what is meant by platform independent and these are the possibilities if it's platform independent. Okay, so now point to note, protocols like Profinet, Profibus, Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP and what so have you on the plant flow itself, OPC UA is not going to replace those, it's not meant to. Those former protocols that I mentioned offer a certain degree of network determinism that you need on the plant floor. Okay, OPC UA is not going to come in there. OPC UA is going to come into the space here of connecting enterprise applications to your plant network safely. That's the potential of it. Now what I'm showing you here is the potential. Will it play off like this to be something that's ubiquitous in all plants that remains to be seen but I just want you to understand that the platform independence has this potential to run in this way and have this architecture okay and that's it for part two thanks